Lorraine worked for Wessex Archaeology for many years, primarily as a ceramic specialist. She retired, and she added in these air quotes herself, it's not me adding those in, um, in 2022, but is still carrying out ceramics work. She specialises in ceramics of the post-Roman period up to the present day and is currently president of the Medieval and Later Pottery Research Group. Hi Lorraine, thank you for coming and talking to us today. Okay. Hey share your presentation or, or are you doing this I think I'm doing uh, it. no Emily can you do it please oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already prepared there we go lovely thank you very much Emily uh, right. and thanks very much for inviting me today I was um slightly apprehensive about being the last person to speak uh this morning but in fact what I think what I'm going to say is going to follow on so well from uh many of this morning's talks so let's let's get going so Rachel's already outlined um, uh, the background to the type series projects. Uh, the creation of linked regional type series across England has been recognised as a way of improving standards of pottery analysis and to unlock its research value. Um, and from the point of view of uh, post-Roman pottery, they seek to ensure a consistency in the approach to recording pottery fabrics across England in the same way that the nationally recommended nomenclature has done for vessel forms. Next slide, please. Uh, so the hard copy uh, for this was published in 1998, and more recently it's uh, moved into a digital version hosted by the ADS. Um, and the promotion and coordination of regional type series was recognised as a strategic priority by the then Medieval Pottery Research Group's latest research framework in 2011. Next slide, please. But it's important to remember that the current batch of post-Roman type, type series projects grew out of a series of meetings and workshops that involved all three pottery research groups. So it's, it's somewhat serendipitous that MLPRG finds itself now in a position to take a more strategic role in the coordination, promotion and maintenance of uh, type series projects across England. And it's hoped that our approach, which will involve liaison with other ceramic research groups, could inform similar project proposals for other periods, um, as has just been intimated. First of all, though, we must pay tribute to Duncan Brown, for many years Head of Archives for Historic England and a strong supporter of type series projects. And it was Duncan who was instrumental in uh, bringing uh, the concept of a, a series of linked type series projects across the country to the table a few years ago. With Duncan's recent retirement from Historic England, there was a need for someone or somebody to step in to provide advice to Historic England and support to the current and future projects planned. And to this end, MLPRG have recently submitted a strategic plan to Historic England, which outlines how we hope to achieve this. Next slide, please. Um, I'd like to acknowledge at this point the input in, into the strategic plan of Kate Balluin, who's currently working on the Devon and Cornwall type series project, Alejandra Gutierrez, who's working with me on the Wiltshire type series project, and Duncan Brown. So essentially, our role can be broken down into these five sections, coordination and support, training and mentoring, advocacy, maintenance and dissemination. Uh, most of those aims have a relevance outside our immediate, uh, immediate strategic role and will certainly find resonances with the other pottery research groups, if not more widely amongst the art, other artefact research groups. And certainly initial discussions with PCRG earlier this year highlighted several areas of common interest. We're very happy to share our experience, but conversely, if this paper strikes a chord with you, um, or anyone else, we'd be delighted to hear from you. And there's no sense in constantly trying to reinvent the wheel. Uh, next slide, please. So to start with coordination and support, um, type series projects that have so far been initi initiated have common goals and have encountered some co common challenges. Uh, Rachel uh, mentioned the meeting that we had earlier this year uh, in which a, a, a group of users got together and discussed some of those issues and challenges. Some of these arise through a lack of consistent framework, and that's perhaps <clears throat> unsurprising for projects at this early stage of the programme. And this is still actively evolving. 
there's still a need for a more consistent use of HE guidance for grant applications. So MLPRG aims to act as a conduit for information exchange, reinforcing HE guidance and sharing other information. Examples of successful project proposals and project designs may, with permission and with sensitive financial information redacted, be circulated in order to inform new projects and to obviate uh, any duplication of effort. Uh, while overall consistency can be encouraged, each new type series is like to, likely to adopt a slightly different working method, depending on the personnel involved and the available resources. Nevertheless, as projects progress, it should be possible to build up a body of information that will allow the continued evaluation of type series projects. In other words, outcomes may be able to be measured against cost and thus inform decisions on funding based on cost effectiveness. Um, and as Rachel has already said, preparing a list of priorities for forthcoming type series projects will be one of our first tasks. Um, the database for the type series projects has been developed by Historic England with an online interface by the ADS. Um, and the database has already been used for some of the early type series projects, notably Somerset, but in a slightly earlier version. And this has had now had continued input uh, from L MLPRG with a view to making it a bit more user friendly. Uh, the final type series has literally just been issued together with a user guide that you can see here, um, uh, which has been produced by Kate Balluin. And she has uh, obviously based it on her own experience uh, with the Devon Cornwall type series, but she's also road tested it uh, by giving some guidance to the London type series project as well. Um, it's also hoped that some database training can be accommodated in individual projects. Uh, next slide, please. Um, an online forum for discussion of issues, obviously a very useful um, thing to do, an opportunity to share useful information and resolve issues that may be common to many projects. Um, here's what we're using at the moment. We're using the Discord, sorry, the Discord platform. Um, this is not um, universally accessible as, as yet, but will be once our revamped website is online. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this, of course, is subject uh, ties in with what many of us have been saying uh, over the course of the morning, training and mentoring, building the next generation of pottery specialists as we become a more aging population. Um, and as Grace and others have pointed out, we can no longer depend on universities providing adequate training in ceramics. So the onus is on us to recognise this and to try and fill the gap. And it was really interesting to, to see um, what Grace and Alice were proposing this morning. Uh, for example, commercial units may be able to accommodate trainee posts on the back of large post-ex projects. Uh, the, but the type series projects offer other opportunities. Um, these projects may employ personnel at various stages of their career, from inexperienced trainee to established specialists. Where inexperienced or less experienced individuals are included in type series, however, it is imperative that they receive appropriate levels of support, training and or mentoring, either from within the project itself or from external bodies. Uh, as part of a wide ranging programme, their tasks should be contextualised i.e. why is the analysis of fabric important to pottery studies? And their work should be fully supported by experienced staff. Ideally, training and or mentoring given should have an impact beyond the immediate requirements of the type series project, building confidence and experience and equipping the trainee for further ceramic work. Um, so our own contribution to this solution is we propose to revive our two-day training programme which was piloted in Bristol in 2016. Some of those attending today may have actually attended that course, um, which included sessions on what, why, and how to record pottery, a session on scientific techniques and publication, along with handling se sessions on good local collections. And the aim is to roll this out across the country as far as we can. And we're also aiming to build up a body of teaching materials, such as fact sheets and instructional instructional videos 
which we'll make available through our revamped website. Uh, next slide, please. Advocacy, um, a crucial fact. Um, from the experience of personnel working on type series projects and from other specialists working on ceramics and indeed artifacts in general, one of the high impact risks to the success of a project is limited access to museum collections. I'm sure I'm preaching to the converted here. Uh, this can arise from a number of factors, but in recent years, the loss of qualified staff, uh, qualified archaeological curators has severely reduced the ability of remaining um, museum staff to understand the range and significance of their collections, and sometimes even the whereabouts, while the sheer lack of manpower may limit their capacity to support visits by researchers trying to access the collections. So in answer to that, MLPRG will seek to forge links with the museum community, for example, through SMA, Society for Museum Archaeology, and offer advice and support, particularly to non-archaeological curators. The circulation of information sheets to museum staff will help to explain the significance of type series projects and how they can benefit museums by boosting access to museums and understanding of their collections and will offer assurance of collections care and conservation awareness of personnel working with their archaeological archives. Individual type series projects have the potential to increase the value of the museum collections they are part of, and this should be stressed throughout. Now, once a type series is complete, its usefulness is significantly diminished if nobody uses it. If the aim of constructing type series is to ensure consistency in pottery recording across England, then ensuring their use is essential. So MLPRG will encourage support from bodies who will be instrumental in enforcing and or advising, and I use these terms advisedly, the use of type series across the country. And these include county archaeological services, HERs, Algeo, etc. cetera. Um, this is just one little extract um, that we'd like to see uh, replicated uh, for the use of type series. Um, this is taken from the Suffolk County Council Archaeological Service Requirements for Excavation. Next slide, please. Maintenance is uh, obviously crucial of type series to retain their relevance, otherwise they just become obsolete. New fabrics should be added as they are identified, or at least on a regular basis, but there must be a proper mechanism for doing this. Uh, potential new fabrics need to be validated, and then added both physically and digitally to the type series. Uh, we envisage this, this taking place on a regular, perhaps annual basis. MLPRG members across England who include the most experienced and respected post-Roman ceramic specialists in the country form a regional network which can support the maintenance of type series after their completion, guaranteeing their development, sustainability and quality. The trigger for a new, uh, incorporating a new fabric could come at any one of several points in a project's lifetime, including during analysis, submission of the project report to the HER, or after deposition of the archive with the local museum. It's important to keep options open as adopting just one of these could be restrictive and problematic. Um, as for the uh, online database, uh, the ADS, as I understand it, um, currently has five years worth of funding to maintain the online database for type series projects to commence on the finalisation of the database, i.e. around now. And there is yet no agreement as to what will happen after that point. Um, while MLPRG is not currently in a position to make concrete proposals here, we will continue to monitor other archive related initiatives for example, Historic England's Future for Archaeological Archives initiative, which includes the proposed provision of a national store and alongside that a national collection of archaeological archives. If these proposals come to fruition, there could be a good case for the national store hosting a national collection of type series, both digital and physical, where there is no other obvious host for the latter. Uh, next slide, please. And lastly, dissemination. Um, the publicizing of type series is essential to their successful embedding in the archaeological process, 
but this resource should be usable by all interested parties, including non-specialists. Once again, MLPRG regional groups can hold, host regional meetings open to both members of non and non-members of MLPRG to review the results of type series projects and where possible to provide opportunities to view and handle the physical samples. Um, and as Imogen has kindly put up on the chat, there is a regional group meeting of the MLPRG uh, happening in devices in November. Uh, and that will report on the ongoing Wiltshire type series project. The reports on type series projects can also be incorporated in national conferences and can be publicised in both the regular newsletter and our annual journal, Medieval Ceramics. So to sum up, while I've outlined how MLPRG is aiming to deal with the type series projects, the implications of this are, are far more widespread. We should be more collaborative. This has come over loud and clear this morning. The louder and more consistent our combined voice, the more likely we are to be listened to. And in terms of knowledge and experience, we all have something to offer each other. So let's work together. Thank you very much. Thank you. And can I just, before I forget, can we have a round of applause for all of our speakers for this afternoon? I've done it before the questions, but <laughs> thank you all. Right, Lorraine, uh, has anyone got any questions for Lorraine? Um, I do have one too. So someone's asked a question, but it's not about, um, it's not about post-Roman pottery. So I'll leave Alice to maybe answer that one in the chat or Kate. Um, but uh, this is just a coming to this as, as a non-pottery specialist. Um, do the online type series have have pictures of the pottery that, that you might be looking up? Or is it yes. like a, just a, okay, yeah. <laughs> yes, they do, yeah. Um, they should have two surfaces and an edge, basically. Right, okay, yeah. Because, uh, you know, and as an animal bone specialist, uh, that's always really useful for us too, to have. Yeah, it's, um, it's a crucial part, a crucial part yeah. of the database. Interesting, okay, thank you. Um, does it also link you to to like uh, like key reports and things like that? Like if if you've got this this pot shared, then then here's the reports that list it or have found not, it before. Not necessarily to that level of detail. Uh, for certain specific fabrics, it might be appropriate to refer mm -hmm. to one specific report, which gives a very good description of it, for example. But no, it won't give you every link to every mm. report. Interesting. Um, I wonder if that's like, you know, once once we've once this easy part is done. <laughs> um yeah. I was uh involved in again a zoo archaeological um effort to start uploading uh archaeological data in a better way to Oasis. Um and so that you could search for, you know, show me all sites with Neolithic cows or something like that. And is there anything that exists like that currently for for pottery uh any, anyone can answer this this is just me asking questions now <laughs> that you could say show me all sites with sub gt uh <laughs> is my, my the only one i know or um, like i that. think in theory um i think the long-term plan is to link all the post-roman digital type series via ads and then you would be able to search more widely um, at the moment, each database for, for each regional database is being deposited separately mm -hmm. and they're not, they, they won't be linked until later on. Thank you. Okay, did I just see a question? No, I think. Uh, so the, there is the question um, for Alice, if you wouldn't mind putting on to answer this one, Alice. Are there any suggestions of uh, who to contact for training or mentoring in Roman pottery in the Southwest? Hello. Yeah, I did. I did put a little answer there. Oh, sorry, um, you I can put it. a shout out on the story group webpage, but also just ping me, oh, yeah. ping me an email. Um, cool. Thank you. In retro answering the question that you just asked. Yeah, before, thank you. <laughs> for, for Roman pottery fabrics, it's really interesting how 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 you can look. I mean, the Paul Tyers webpage pot shared is brilliant for looking at distributions, and it updates his his 1990s book, so you can look at some Roman pottery fabric distributions there. 
Um, Roman pottery settlement project actually also did some interesting dis distributions of Roman pottery, especially if you're interested in like amphora or Samian or funerary vessels or whatever. So it's worth looking on their ads web page and having a having a route all through there. Um, but really, what we need is a Paul Tyers potsherd and Tom Brundor fabric series um, mashup. So all the information is available in one place. But as, as our previous speaker, Lorraine, Lorraine mentioned, it's the um, maintenance that's the key. And uh, that's the charm. <laughs>